Hi, and welcome back to Purple Color Life. In today's video, we're talking about the truck, specifically that Godzilla engine. That's right, we got our second oil analysis back from Blackstone. Let's talk about those results. Olive's there in the truck because she heard me getting the truck keys out and she just can't stand if I go outside to the truck and don't take her along for a ride. Well, let's start with the obvious here. We are at almost 30,000 miles, 29,000 plus miles, nearly 30,000. The engine sounds great. I mean, there's the normal noises that you hear from the engine compartment. No unusual ticking or clanging or strange noises. The truck's running. So I'm not going to pull the dipstick out, but when you do pull the dipstick out, there's no strange metallic flick on the engine oil. So I do have this oil analysis here, and we're going to go over that line by line. But before we get started, I had a lot of questions on the last oil analysis. Remember, those numbers came in not good, and a lot of people ask about the oil I was using. So I want to show you the oil I use. Now, disregard the viscosity of this oil, but this is for the, the Ford Ranger, not the F-350, but I did have this in a 5W30. Same thing, Motorcraft Synthetic Blend Motor Oil, so the Synthetic Blend 5W30 is what I previously used in this truck for the oil changes up to this most recent one. The most recent oil change I switched to Mobile One. Now this is the high mileage, the truck doesn't have high mileage, but this just happened to be on sale, so I figured it, would, it wouldn't hurt to use the high mileage oil. But you can see Mobile One 5W30 synthetic oil is what I used in this truck the last time we changed the oil. People always ask about the filter too. I stick with the Motorcraft brand. I've seen a lot of testing of filters and it seems like the Motorcraft filter is a good filter. Uh, so I use the one that's recommended for the 7.3 Godzilla engine in our truck. That's the Motorcraft FL820S. Make sure you check your manual so that you're using the right filter for your truck or vehicle. One other quick thing before we get into these results. At the start of the summer, I hinted that there were gonna be some big announcements here at the channel at Purple Collar Life. I've already showed you the new Mini X. I've already showed you the new Splitfire Log Splitter. Now I wanna to talk to you about these shirts. So yes, we are gonna have Purple Collar Life nice warm hoodies for sale and Next Level t-shirts. And Next Level is a blended t-shirt. It's my favorite kind of t-shirt out there with branding on it. It's not one of the cheap kinds that aren't comfortable, that don't fit well. This is my favorite t-shirt brand with Purple Color Life logo on it. Now, we are gonna be, for a limited time, offering shirts for sale. And you're wondering, how do you get to them? Big announcement new website purplecollarlife.com so please go check it out we do have a brand new website purplecollarlife.com and on that website lots of great information you can see our most recent videos there's going to be blog posts on there there's already some of them up but we'll keep adding to that you can sign up for a newsletter you can see the equipment that we use and you can order sweatshirts and t-shirts for now we're just going to sell them in black with the white logo and branding on them and this is gonna be a limited time thing. We're gonna sell them through November 15th, so short window here, but I wanna be able to put in a order for everyone's shirts all at once, and then we'll make sure we get them shipped out to you for Christmas. So you can order those right on the website, purplecollarlife.com. That's a pretty big deal to have a website for our YouTube channel. We're very excited about it. All right, let's get back to talking about the truck. I think Olive fell asleep inside there. Hey girl. Let's talk about those oil analysis results. Hey Olive, what do you think about the new website? I couldn't help but notice that you are on the front cover on the newsletter sign up pop-up window. Not impressed? Okay, so no clickbait here. Nothing tricky about our oil analysis this time. Our truck got a much better report card in my opinion, but I'm looking for you guys to leave your comments down below. Now I would consider the 4,868 miles between oil changes that we had when we did this analysis, heavy use. We were towing boat, 
We were towing the camper several times. Um, we were hauling a lot. So I would call the majority of that heavy use. There was also a lot of idle time. If you'll recall, Olive has been sick all summer long. So anytime we went somewhere and she couldn't come into, for example, Walmart with us or the store with us, we'd leave the truck running, idling. She'd wait in the truck for us to come back out. So heavy use and a lot of idle time on this oil change of almost 5,000 miles, 4,868. Now remember, this oil analysis was on the Motorcraft Synthetic Blend 5W30 motor oil using the Motorcraft oil filter. Now let's take a look at these numbers. If you've never had an oil analysis from Blackstone before, they do a great job of explaining and showing you all the numbers. I like to start out with the comments here. It says, Chad, iron dropped, which was the number one concern last time. Our iron number was pretty high. That was worrying me about those lifters and cam failures, maybe the delaminating as a lot of people call it. Um, these results, I'm glad that they mentioned iron dropped, showing much less wear at steel parts in this 7.3 V8. Maybe the excess iron in the first sample was from hard use, a long oil run, or residual from when the engine was breaking in. All that's possible. We did not buy this truck brand new. It was used. It had almost 20,000 miles on it when we bought it. Whatever the case may be, this better reading makes it clear that the steel parts in this engine were getting along well over the last 4,900 miles. The other wear metals were stable at good levels. Fuel dilution is still mild at only 0.5%, and the slightly low or thin viscosity doesn't spell trouble either. Good report. Just look for iron to stay lower like this going forward. And what's really cool about this report is it shows me my last oil change on April 26th of this year at 24,500 miles and my most recent oil change 29,368 miles on October 10th so that mileage on the oil was 4,868. So let's look down through these numbers. Okay, so aluminum. Last oil change, it was at five. This oil change was at five. The average is five. Chromium. It was one last time, one is the average, it was zero this time. Iron, average is 22. Last time we were at 29, that was that worrisome number, they had it bold, really scared me. This time we're at 14, so less than half of the iron this time in our oil analysis than there was last time. That is very reassuring, makes me think that maybe we are not one of the problem trucks that are gonna have the cam and lifter delamination or spalling that's occurring in those 7.3 Godzilla engines. Copper, last time we were two, average is two, this time we're one, no lead or tin. Molybdenum, last time we were 146, the average is 148, this time we were 149. Manganese, last time we were one, average is one, we were at zero. We'll skip down here, no silver, no titanium, no potassium. Boron, so this one's a little bit different. Average is 71, this time we're at 77, last time we were at 65, but they didn't make that number bold, so I'm assuming that's an okay increase, six over the average, and 12 over our last analysis. Silicon, last time we were at 18, average is 16, this time we're at 13. Sodium, we're at seven, which is right on the average. Calcium, we came down from last time, last time we were 1429, this time we're 1293. Magnesium, we're still good. Phosphorus, we're still good. Zinc, we're lower than last time by quite a bit. We were at 766. Last time we were at 877, the average is 822. But again, they didn't bold that number, so I'm guessing it's not anything to be concerned about. Then these properties down at the, at the bottom show you the viscosity at 210 degrees Fahrenheit, the flash point, the fuel percentage, antifreeze which is none if you'd had antifreeze in your oil that would mean potentially a head gasket issue or some other gasket or engine failure insolubles were negligible and then we did not pay the extra for the tbn the tan or the iso code so good job truck good job godzilla engine nice report card this is much more reassuring than that last one if you didn't catch the last video we did a video about the engine oil analysis, I'll put a link to that up above, but the numbers in that one weren't nearly as good 
because of that high iron content really had me worried. This one, I'm feeling much better. So hopefully this information helped you out. I do recommend getting these oil analysis. Yes, it's a little bit of money on top of the oil change every time, but it's also some peace of mind and maybe some early indicators or uh, key indicators to potential failures in your engine. And I think it's just, it's worth the investment to know what's happening inside your engine. It's kind of like the blood work you get done at the doctor every year. Just keep track of those numbers, see how they change over time. Let's talk a little bit about oil change interval. Yes, we did wait 4,800 miles to have this oil change and that was heavy use. That was a matter of uh, time that we had available to change the oil. So we were traveling so much, taking the boat out, taking the camper out. We just ended up going over that 3,000 or 3,500 mark. Uh, and not being able to change oil until 4,800 miles after the previous oil change. Now, I'm gonna try to be in that 3,000 to 4,000 mile range when possible. If you're curious what the computer said we had left for life, it still said we had 35% oil life left when we changed the oil. We do still have the hitch in here because I did take the pontoon boat to get it uh, winterized for winter, and I do still tow that enclosed trailer around with the zero turn to take care of the, the cemetery that's part of our small lawn care business. So the hitch is still in here, but we're not doing any heavy towing. Our next oil change, again, will be an analysis of that Mobile One oil. So it'll be interesting to see how the changes occur based on the oil type. Previously, we're a Motorcraft Synthetic Blend. This time, we're full synthetic Mobile One. And a difference of wintertime versus summertime. So in the summer, we're towing that 12,500 pound camper around in the winter hardly towing anything at all, maybe some sandbags in the back just for weight in the back of this truck, but mostly empty truck miles in the winter time. Somebody had asked in a previous video if we were gonna be getting a snow plow for the F-350. While it would be nice and convenient to plow with the truck, I cannot imagine plowing snow with a vehicle that long. You gotta have a large turning radius and a lot of turnaround space and typically when you think about snow plowing, you want a short vehicle, short wheelbase, tight turning radius, something like a Jeep or a old Ford Bronco, something like that. Maybe a regular cab, short bed, pickup truck. Don't forget, I'll also be doing a future video about how this tar and chip or chip seal is holding up on the driveway. So more information about whether or not we would make this investment again, stay tuned for that video in the future. So before we go, I just wanted to mention that our transmission issue, the 10 speed issue, that is not sorted out. We're still kind of dealing with that. And I'll talk to you about that in a future video. This one I just wanted to be about the latest of the oil analysis. Um, so that's good news on the engine front, at least for now. Don't forget to check out the new website, purplecollarlife.com. If you're interested in getting someone a Christmas present, nice Purple Collar Life hoodie or t-shirt, those are available on the website. and. We'll catch you again the next time. More information about the truck and the transmission. We do have some upcoming firewood videos, so if you're waiting on some firewood updates, those are gonna be coming up soon. And I've got another project for the Mini X for those of you who are tuning in for the Mini X videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time here on Purple Collar Life.